I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. All right, welcome back, everyone, to the third episode of the Best Thing We've Seen podcast. My name is Flo. And as always, I'm Gabe, or not. Oops, as always, <laughs> as he hits the microphone. <laughs> We're very professional. Uh, this set is up also here. new to me. <laughs> it shouldn't be anymore. This is the third time. We're professionals. Every right time now. is like the first time. <laughs> yes, it is. How are you? <laughs> uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, you, you sound excited. I'm incredibly excited. Yeah. Because... We do this way too early. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's way too early. Yeah, it got up like an hour ago. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> we don't want to share what time it is. Well, it could be any time. It could be any time, yeah. It's, it's 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, before we get into the show, the first thing that we have to talk about is our new cover design, which is something that we're incredibly excited about. And um, we have to be, uh, say a huge thank you to our friend Laura, who designed the whole thing. We, uh, we just gave her like a quick idea and she produced this wonderful thing and we're so grateful for her and it's it's amazing yeah. so it looks really great i mean you're gonna see it if you want to watch this episode it's gonna be live coming live with, together with this episode yeah and she did it in a qu quite a short time which makes it even more amazing and yeah if you do know what we look like which probably most of you do. Um, you're going to see quite a resemblance in our silhouettes that you're going to see in a cover art, which is just great how she did that. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't expect it to be anything uh, like this to look... Because I, 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 we had the idea of like having two people like watching a screen, but I didn't know that she was actually going to draw us and you can actually yeah. like recognize us, which is incredible. So, Laura, thank you so much again. We've thanked her a lot in person, but we, we want to thank you on the record as well for sure yeah so um i quite like the old design as well i gotta be honest but it's obviously i am not i don't want to compare it to the new one but we'll, we'll, well, we'll keep it around for like uh, other other reasons maybe the the old design maybe we'll the new one is just more slick oh, dude, I love it's it. better in every way yeah. for sure it's it's incredible so thank you so much laura yeah thank you um another thing that we have to talk about is that this is the first episode that we're recording after we published our first episode and now our second and now our second episode as well how was the reaction for for from your friends and family uh better than i hoped actually and also the views have been way higher than i hoped the but listens <laughs> the listens yeah that's right yeah, that's okay uh, i mean it's a low compared to a normal podcast but it's of course the yeah. numbers exceeded uh or uh, first expectations by quite a bit for sure yeah uh i mean we don't expect those numbers to stay consistent because it's gotta, it's gotta stay positive it's gotta stay positive it's gonna be great from here on out <laughs> it's like a thousand views every month yeah. every week sorry listens listens <laughs> yeah, come on i'm sorry part. i know i know i'm just teasing because you view or beautiful cover art now that's true yeah. it's beautifully said yeah. yeah that's the best thing that we've yeah. seen that cover art <laughs> just, just listen to without audio just look at it <laughs> about an hour yeah but um, yeah, I didn't expect any like any kind of response like this. So we're very, very happy and, and thankful and grateful for, for your feedback and everything. Yep. And also, uh, as we mentioned the, in the last episode, that we, um, we were like a couple of days before the Academy Awards. And now this is obviously the first episode that we're recording after the Academy Awards. Um, yeah. What did you make of them? What did you make of the, of the upsets and the results and, uh, and everything? Well, I don't know which were the big upsets. I don't know. Well, Parasite winning, but it's not an upset, but it's sort of a... Uh, I've, I think it's quite the opposite. I think it's quite the popular vote. Right, but I, I mean upset by inter like uh, no one expected it really. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's great for them. I think it's great that a foreign film has won the Academy Award yeah. for Best Picture. Um, I do not necessarily agree that it was the Best Picture because although... What would you have chosen? I probably would have chosen 1917. I yeah, really I loved that film. <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, that that was sort of the one that everyone expected it to be. Yeah. Or if you if you went by the results from the other from the other from the award season, like mm -hmm. the Globes and stuff, that 1917 was the one that sort of 
I think they won best drama. Yeah. And what, which one did uh, which uh, won best comedy? Right. That's a good question. What's upon time in Hollywood? Uh, I don't think so. That's a good question. What was what, what were the other films like nominated? Best. Um, um, well, Marriage Story, right? Comedy. <laughs> Is it very I'm gonna good? look it up real quick. It's just in general, which uh, films were nominated? Um, Joker, great comedy. Right, which get, yeah, you got, but that, that's inspiring comic. And it's <laughs> <laughs> um, drama, motion picture. There it is. Once upon a time in Hollywood. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. Yep, I didn't expect. I didn't see that. Yeah, I think the movie would have also deserved the best picture win. Yeah, I was rooting for that one. Yeah. I was not, like, I didn't expect it to win, but that was sort of it was my favorite film of the ones nominated. I would say. What did you think of the results? I mean, uh, we both agree about Parasite uh, that we both think it's a great movie but it was just a little bit too hyped yeah well I, I, I've been a fan of the director for a long time and I was like it took us a while to get the movie in Austria mm-hmm. so we heard all the buzz and it was like incredible because I've, it's like the highest rated film on, on some social media sites and some movie network sites and stuff and that hype sort of you know, it, it's always difficult to sort of live up to that hype. And it didn't live up to that hype for me, even though I really liked the film. I just don't quite understand why everyone thinks it's like the best film ever made. Mm. But I'm so happy for the for the director for Bong, Jung, Bong Joon-ho yeah. because he's a he seems like a great guy as well. He I'm seems incredibly him. nice. And he seemed incredibly humbled, which I think is just a very cool trait in the director to have. Yeah. Especially when you look at, uh, I don't know, the directors that were nominated, who uh, I think most of them uh, seem more convinced by their work. Right. And, like, I don't know. I deserve this. I could win. And he just came you on stage. So? No, I think none of them would have been that surprised if they won. Sure. I well, mean, we'll all claim um, directors. Sure. Like Scorsese, Tarantino, or Sam Mendes even. He was the one who was like also the front runner, I yeah. would say. And then uh, for Bang Joon-ho to win... Uh, best director I think was his first Academy I think it was screenplay or screenplay and he just seemed uh, so surprised it's, yeah he seems like a great guy yeah. so I'm, I'm happy for him and um, the other categories I think there were there wasn't any big surprise I, no, think I, I agree with most one. of them except maybe visual effects because as much as I love 1917 I think uh, a film like Avengers Endgame for example did a way bigger job just on a bigger scale of doing visual effects and way more complex and I mean we don't know way more this. CGI we don't know though because there, there are like some YouTube videos on the on the VFX on, on 1917 and it's, most of that stuff is like things that you don't expect it to be CG yeah sure so but I mean Endgame is like 90% CGI right which but you could argue that the most CGI is not the best CGI I, I agree with you that it looks great um but- yeah it, it, it might not look like the best CGI, but that's just because it's on such a big scale. And it's way more noticeable than if not, you hide in the background. Right, right. I, I, I'm not saying that it doesn't look good. I'm just yeah. saying I think it's it's um, it's a safer choice or an easier choice to make to say that Endgame deserves it more because you see it, obviously. You, you know what you're looking for in terms of VFX. And on 1917, for example, you don't really know what you're looking for because they're like... You know, blurring stuff out and removing tire tracks and whatever things you don't really think that the CG. Okay, I mean, yeah, uh, I'm not an expert in visual effects. No, either. no regard. Uh, but just thinking about the end game, had two fully CGI characters, the Incredible right. Hulk oh, and yeah, yeah, you're right. Thanos, yeah, yeah. and they look great. Sure, yeah. you must have had more than two, right? But yeah, uh, sure. I mean, Rocket and so many, I know. More, yeah. But and uh, those were. Uh, appeared quite a lot throughout the movie. Yeah, sure. So, and the the yeah the actor categories they were like set from the get go. Right, it was, yeah. it was uh, the Joker, Joaquin Phoenix, it Brad was Pitt for Brad Pitt. Yeah, Once Upon a Time, Judy for uh, Renee Zellweger. Yeah, yeah. The Judy. For Judy. Yeah, and, and uh, Laura Dern for yeah. Marriage Story. Right. So yeah, it was pretty uneventful in terms of that from the the Academy Award. We we watched it as we as we do every year in a in a cinema in a full cinema. Yeah. And the um, yeah, it was, it was like uneventful. I would say there were no yeah. big surprises after, like except maybe the parasite. I think it was a great year, just uh, from what was nominated. Yeah, 
I think I loved every single film that was nominated. Really? Oh, well, loved. I thought every one of them was good. It was a strong year, for sure. Yeah. I'm just trying to remember everything that was nominated. It's a lot. I keep forgetting. It's a lot. I think films, like eight yeah. or nine films, in. So anyway, yeah. Um, right. Do you, want to, do you want to tell them how, how the show works, what we do? All right. So if you're new to this and you've stuck through the first 10, 15 minutes without knowing what we're actually going to talk about, thank you. And this is the best thing we've seen, or best thing we've seen, without the death. <laughs> <laughs> you can chuck it in there. Uh, and we just talk about the best thing we've seen uh, in the last week or seven days. Uh, th- this includes uh, films, TV shows, YouTube clips, whatever. Any kind of visual medium. Maybe an art exhibition. Right. <laughs> Teaser for later. It's a nice little flashback to the last episode. <laughs> for all the fans out there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's going to happen. We know you're out there. Um, so, yeah. So, we're going to kick this off by talking about our top picks of the week. Want to start? No, no, no. It's got to be you, dude. Because this week has been a very, very slow week for me in terms of watching okay. stuff. Um, we, we, have, we, we talk about it every week, but we, we obviously... Usually we watch at least one new film a week by going to the sneak preview. Yeah. And that's sort of the only new thing that I've seen. So my choices are very limited this week. So I want you to start us off. All right. Uh, my choice is a film. Yes. Which I do not think you've seen. Okay. Um, I was invited uh, by friends to go see it because we both loved the director's previous film, which was Your Name. Right. By Makoto Shinkai. <laughs> I'm sorry if I just pronounced it. Yeah. I said it with so much confidence. Yeah. Um, Hold on. Let me think. What I, I've heard about the film that you're talking about. I haven't seen it, but I But you've I, seen your name, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good film. Yeah. Right, sorry, you, I'm not going to... Yeah. I'm not going to... Anyway, the, the new film is Tenkinoko. <laughs> I have no idea if they pronounced it right. Uh, it's Weathering, Weathering with You. Weathering With You. I'm yeah. going to say that right now. Fuck! I didn't... I had no guts. Um... Uh, <laughs> Right. So, where did you see that? What was uh, Film Casino? Okay, it was a very limited release. Uh, I think, as far as I saw, they had like uh, six showings or something like that. I mean, maybe they had more. I just didn't see them. And um, like a third of them were in German, and I want to see it in its original version. And there was only one date where I actually had time, and I was lucky enough um, that uh, a friend of ours, Celine, managed to book tickets. Mm-hmm invited me to go see it and beautiful film <laughs> just from the visuals incredibly beautiful i think this kind of movie could be nominated for best uh animated feature well, no. i think it's been out for like months yeah probably That's the thing. Yeah. So i think it's probably it's in japan it's probably not i think for, it's yeah. been eligible for like last year's or this yeah. year's academy i don't know if it's going to be eligible for next I, mean, year. I do understand if it's not nominated because well i thought the story was very interesting quite cool what is it about um, it is about a. Well, it's quite complicated to explain. Um, it's about a boy who run, uh, run, uh, runs away. So it's it's animated, um, right? You said yeah, it's that, an yeah. anime. It's an anime. Uh, he runs away and comes to Tokyo, and then he meets a girl there. And while he comes to Tokyo, it's always raining. It keeps raining. It keeps raining. The city's getting slowly flooded, <laughs> and everybody's quite unhappy because it's summer and it's been raining for weeks. And he kind of finds someone who takes him in and gives him a job writing for a small paper. And then he, by accident, he meets this girl who is a sun girl, sunshine girl. Okay. Which means if she prays to, I don't know, Shinto gods, um, the sun will come out for a limited time. And he kind of, uh, uh, it's kind of a story of friendship and young love and the city which is constantly under rain everybody's getting quite depressed and then they start a business so if anybody wants some sunshine for an, a wedding birthday whatever they can uh, write to the sunshine girl she'll come over okay she'll pray she'll they'll get some sunshine right, that's interesting yeah it's quite a weird plot as and, was your name right yeah sure yeah it does and uh, definitely has quite a bit of similarities have you um is it like similar in, in animation style? It is, but kinda in on an even grander scale. Okay. Because uh most of the film is set in Tokyo. And it's done beautiful beautifully, just uh, the rain and um the whole landscape and it's quite difficult to describe, but there was one scene which I thought was 
It's, uh, it just looked incredible. Yeah, I think it's the Sunshine Girl or the protagonist, the boy. I don't remember. But they're standing on the roof. And then it looked like as if the camera would uh, would move. Uh, it's moving uh, 360 degrees around them. You see uh, all the surrounding area. I thought it just looked amazing. To do this in animation, I think, must be quite hard. Especially when you take a grand city like Tokyo and all the details. Yeah, beautiful film. Uh, but is, it, is it better than your name? No. No. Because that, that's sort of like, that was one of the more popular anime films over the last couple of years, mm-hmm. uh, Your Name. Even though I heard that the director wasn't even happy with the final product. Because I'm not quite sure why, but I... I I think I remember correctly that he wasn't quite happy with it. Even okay. Everyone else seemed to love it. And that's a beautiful film, uh, like a body switch type comedy slash romance sci-fi yeah. thing. Really great premise just yeah. to explore it. And I think it just works best made in animation. Yeah, that type of story is, is difficult to tell otherwise for sure. Yeah. So it sounds interesting. I'm not, as you know, I'm not the biggest anime, anime or animation f- mm-hmm. fan. So I'm not, I, w- I wasn't like running out to see Weathering with you. But... It I think it's quite sounds right. interesting. I, mean, I love a bit of rain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be necessarily a fan of anime, but what it does have, what a lot of uh, animes have, is just way too dramatic scenes. It's just, it's just melodramatic uh, times ten. I don't know which kind of took me out of the movie mm-hmm. because I just couldn't take it seriously at times. Is it a long movie? Uh, like uh, one fifty, one forty. Okay, not quite right. What minutes or, or as a one hour forty one hour minutes? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's a good good cinema to watch stuff like that. The film casino. Yeah, film casino is one of few uh, cinemas in Vienna who show anime movies. Yeah, no. they're seeking out the stuff that other cinemas don't play usually. No. So, what have you watched? Files. Well, <clears throat> my choice is um is gonna it's it sounds kind of you know bad, but it's it, I've seen one film, so I'm gonna have to pick that one, but. I, I, I enjoyed the film. You know, I'm not going to say like it's the best thing I've seen mm-hmm. in over the last like month, but it's, it's the best thing I've seen this week because it's the only thing I've seen. And it's um, Guy Ritchie's new film. It's called The Gentleman, as you know, because we watched it together. <clears throat> that was the last sneak that we saw. And it's a film that, you know, I was looking forward to. I'm not yeah. a huge Guy Ritchie fan by any means. Um, like the, his more recent stuff uh, didn't really... King Arthur and... Right, King Arthur and the Man from Uncle and stuff. Mm-hmm. Those are the two most recent th- things I've seen from him mm-hmm. and I, I enjoyed those but I didn't really love them but the premise of The Gentleman which is like a difficult to explain but it's uh, it kind of goes back more to his older films like Crime in London yeah or is it London? Uh, Crime uh, in Britain right, <laughs> Crime in Britain yeah but you know the, the cast is great and, and the story of like Hugh Grant is sort of the narrator mm-hmm. kind of guy who writes a script and that script is sort of then told on the screen it's a it's a weird it's a weird kind of plot mm-hmm. but it's a heist it's not really a heist but it's a crime thing as you said and it's about drug trafficking and matthew mcconaughey is sort of the the antagonist mm-hmm. and um or the protagonist however, however you want to however you know you want to see the film well matthew mcconaughey is more of the good guy in the story although he is more of an anti-hero right that's uh, that's the best way to describe it probably but um yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I had my problems with it, as I do with most Guy Ritchie films, because it sort of has like a slow middle part. I, I felt like I, lo- I loved the, the beginning of like Hugh Grant coming mm-hmm. into the into the house of Charlie Hunnam, and then they started sort of talking about whatever everything that's been happening and everything that's going to happen. And Colin Farrell is great. He was my highlight. Yeah, he was great. Movie. Yeah, he uh, his best joke is in the trailer. But it, which like, one was that? It was like where he opens the trunk and the guy Fahak is in there. <laughs> <laughs> Just that is funny. Like. His name is Fahak, like, you know, Fahak. <laughs> yeah, but what was it like? Calm the Fahak down. <laughs> it's just a great little throwaway line. It's, it's, it's just funny and he plays it. He plays it well because he's, he, he plays it straight, which is good. He's like an eccentric guy, but he plays it straight. It's, it's great. What did you think of it? Better than I thought it would be because, um, like you said, I think also the last films I've seen by Guy Ritchie were King Arthur and Man from Uncle, and I didn't like either of those films. I really liked his old stuff like Snatch and um, what's called Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, which was a pleasant surprise to see that this movie kind of went back to those kind of films. For sure. I thought it was quite entertaining, but I thought 
Hugh Grant's story arc kind of develops uh, more towards the end. And in the beginning, he's more of the narrator. And I thought his story line and his way of narrating just kind of got boring after a while. <laughs> it was just this kind of same five jokes that he repeated time after time. Just, yeah. yeah, I can see what you're saying, yeah. But it's can you explain like the story? Because it's it's I, I'm struggling to, to explain like what um, it's about. Well, Hugh Grant is a journalist who comes to the house of Charlie Hunnam, who is a henchman of Matthew McConaughey, who is a drug lord. And he says he has some information for him, and he kind of unfolds what he knows that could help his organization, Charlie Hunnam's. And what he tells him is kind of his version of the story. So he kind of gets gives a recap of what has happened, who Matthew McConaughey is, and what has happened, including scenes where Charlie Hunnam is actually present, so he kind of stops and mid through his story sometimes and says, no, that's not how it actually happened. Because right. all you see is just Hugh Grant's version of the story. Right. But I, I, I have to admit, I struggled sometimes to keep up what was happening, what yeah. was real and what was like fictional like Me too. in the story. But that's like also like something that can be seen as a negative, in my opinion, that you, you can sort of like get lost in the story and don't really know what's going on, mm-hmm. like in a bad way. Yeah, after the film was over, when I went to the bathroom, I... Met two people talk, uh, who were the same um, movie as we movie as we were, and they said the same thing that they just couldn't keep up at times yeah. with what was going on. Especially when you go into the sneak and you do not know about the film, you know nothing in advance. You just go in, and just see the story unfold. You get quite easily confused. Right. I think maybe we're just too stupid, but. And it's not a complicated story, just uh, a very uh, rapid succession of scenes. And if you're not keeping up or just tired, right. you easily get lost. I agree. But I think th- like, the movie seems to be doing quite well, mm-hmm. and um, critics seem to love it. And it's sort of back to form for, for Guy Ritchie, which, as you said, it's sort of back going back to what he did in the early 2000s and mm-hmm. late 90s or whatever. And um, I think it's it's great to see him do the kind of stuff that he was that he is famous for because he does it quite well, I yeah. think. And it's it's. Listen, if you if you're a crime fan and it's it's got a lot of humor in it as well, I think it's it's a it's a solid recommendation. I think it's 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 going to come out. I think it's, it comes out maybe this week or next week. Yeah. I think it's not a great film, but if you're into action movies or just kind of uh, more of a casual thing to watch with a couple of friends, for that it's great. Yeah, I wouldn't say. I don't know if you're alone at home and want something great to watch maybe not this yeah in my opinion but if you're going for a kind of nice chill evening with I don't know, a beer and some popcorn perfect move for that yeah i agree it's like a fun film to watch with friends so have you seen any anything else like new or anything old you've seen recently that you want to, want to talk about something very new that i've seen which is new everywhere because it's a netflix film released in 2020 is horse girl I don't know if you've heard about it. Yeah. Um, Alison Brie. Yeah. It's a very, very <laughs> weird <laughs> indie film. It's very hard to explain what the film is actually about without giving anything away. Judging from, from your facial expression, you didn't love it though, right? Is it, no, is it good? I didn't love it. Uh, I think it's very hard to watch at times. Cause it's about very... like a schizophrenic girl, is it? Or someone with like a yes, split personality? Kind of. Okay. I don't want to say too much because I think half the experience of this film is just figuring out what's going on. Okay. And I had no idea what I was getting into. The description was, I think, a girl who's seeing vision, yeah. visions. And it's kind of a vague description. And it's called Horse Girl because apparently she really loves horses or one specific horse who she keeps visiting and the people at the ranch want her to just leave them alone because apparently the horse uh, belonged to her a few years ago but no longer just keeps coming back and she just seems like uh, very socially incompetent which makes it very uncomfortable to watch a whole lot of scenes and I think the movie is like 140, 150 one hour, 40 minutes yeah it took me close to three hours to actually finish it. Wow. I do pause it quite a few it's times. It's something for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you, don't usually, you don't usually pause films, do you? 
Well, uh, when I watch them on Netflix, I do sometimes. Okay. It very much depends if it's... And that was a great film, and it's supposed to be watched in one go. Like, I don't know, The Irishman. I did watch in one go. But, I uh, don't know. Films like that, if I just it just gets too uncomfortable, <laughs> like to, I don't know, just stop it for like ten minutes, get something to eat, and then resume watching. But why do you why do you why do you feel like The Irishman is something that you you're supposed to watch in one go as a, compared to The Horse Girl? I'm, no, I think they're both meant to be watching one go, as probably every movie is, except, <laughs> except maybe if it has an what's it called intermezzo, sure. intermission. Um, <laughs> but are there movies on Netflix with with in, intermissions? I don't know. Are there? The last movie I saw with an intermission was Hateful, Hateful Eight. Eight. Yeah. yeah, like the last new one. Obviously, yeah. there's a couple of old ones that I've seen in cinemas with intermissions. But there was uh, no uh, Irishman is by Martin Scorsese, whom I'm a big fan of. And I just when I watch this movie, I want the full experience. Because you want to be drained by the end. You want to be exhausted. Yeah. Like, you don't want to be enjoy. It. You don't want to enjoy it anymore. You just want to be, want it to be over, <laughs> <laughs> as he intended it. Uh, uh, like who was it? Steve Martin? No, I don't know what you're gonna say. Fuck! I love. We loved the first season of. Oh, that was such a good joke. I the think Irishman. it was Steve Martin. Yeah, huh? yeah. yeah. Oh, but mm-hmm. he, he like the first two guys who walked out on, mm-hmm. at the Academy Awards were Steve Martin and Chris Rock, and they had some good jokes. Yeah. yeah. And Steve Martin said that he enjoyed, he, 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 yeah, he told Martin Scorsese, he was in the audience, that he really enjoyed the first season of The Irishman, mm-hmm. which is, you know, because it's such a long film, it's good. But yeah. Have you seen, um, last, last week we, um, last week I talked about uh, the show Taskmaster, mm-hmm. and after we recorded that session, uh, like five hours later you came to me and you, you told me that you watched five episodes. So what, what can you what can you tell tell us about that show? Have you continued watching that? I finished season three. <laughs> okay, and uh, on YouTube right now, uh, season four. I think only the first two or three episodes are live. Yep. So I'm waiting until the season finishes. And I'm gonna keep watching. <laughs> uh, I I loved it, especially the first season. But after watching like the second and the third, it got a little repetitive. Okay. I think I just watched it in too short a time. Yeah. Which, just a problem I have. I I can't pace myself. <laughs> um, but I'm excited for season four because of uh, one of the guests who's going to star as one of uh, the stars from the IT crowd. I don't think so. Oh, no Fielding. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that took me a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's um, the. I know. Yeah. How far are you? And I've seen it all. Yeah. yeah. But I, funnily, like all that's on YouTube, and funnily enough. I watched the last episode yesterday and I didn't know that it was the last episode. So of season mm-hmm. series four, I didn't know that there was no, like by the season four concluded on YouTube. No, no, no. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't know that there was only, th- there were only three episodes mm-hmm. of season four uh, on YouTube. So by the time that we're recording this, there's only like three episodes mm-hmm. and the fourth one will be released maybe today. I don't know, but I love it. What I failed to mention last week when we talked about it is that the contestants are all comedians. I think, that sort Except of in season two, where one is a producer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, yeah, it's a running gag, but he's also a comedian. Yeah. Yeah. But that sort of, it, it's not like a game show where like random people from the street are contestants. It's, it's like comedians, and that makes the show really, really funny, in yeah. my opinion. Which also made it kind of hard to transition from season to season, because when I watched season one, I really uh, fell in love with the guests. I mean, they were just great. And then uh, kind of getting used to the new uh, comedians was kind of weird it, but it only takes like two episodes and yeah. I think then you're in love with the new contestants although I have to say I'm not a big fan of the contestants from season 3 I think 1 and 2 were the best uh, were the best season 3 was the one with who, who's in that is, is that with the with the Indian guy with the beard mm-hmm. Paul he, Chowdhury he was incredibly serious all the time right but he was funny I, li- I like his, yeah. his demeanor what was your favorite task that's, that's quite a hard question but I think I, my favorite task was in season two, impress the mayor. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the one guy just bought 42 so, calippos. Yeah, <laughs> a couple was of such, Was that the second? I think you're right, yeah. But that was like, he was such a great character, the mayor. Yeah, he was great. He, just his expressions alone made it funny. But um, I, told, I told you about the, um, the potato challenge, mm-hmm. and I was sort of teasing that one. The without first, spoiling it now, okay. but you know why that's a yeah, fantastic yeah. episode, because of the, uh, obviously that... You think it's over, but it's mm-hmm. not quite over yet. And his sort of expression is, is just genius. 
but as you said because you said that you sort of get used to the to the contestants i've i can maybe tease you i hope you yeah i think you're not gonna please tease me and you're not gonna mind that I'm, I'm gonna tell you this but i think it's like series, series five or six where they bring where the contestants are like the the winners from the previous four okay so you can you can sort of you bring back sort of the, the hall of famers well in season two uh the winner from season one makes a couple of guest appearances right. in the group challenges he's, yeah he's one of my favorites that's josh whittacombe mm-hmm. i think right this one, yeah and he, he he's coming back as well okay uh, but i also heard that uh there's an american remake also starring alex as the Is henchman there? and it's supposed to be terrible i have not heard of this well, who's the host you know i don't know no idea it, it's out yeah so there's it's, been uh, supposedly like one or two seasons but as I, I looked it up and it's got terrible ratings yeah it's, you can't 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 remake everything the yeah. Brits sort of know what they're doing and the, ho- the Taskmaster is great Greg yeah. Davis he he makes the show I think right so um, it's a very short episode yeah we need to talk about something else um, well it's alright because I have something great to talk about Let's go. The art exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> right. So last week you talked about that you're going to see a painting. That's going to be the best thing you've seen. What have you That's seen? Just one painting. Okay. A whole lot of paintings. A whole lot of paintings. Um, yeah, I went to the art exhibition and I took a fly with me so I would remember the name. And I've been carrying around this fly for about a week in my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it looks kind of worn <laughs> and torn. Uh, anyway, it's called... Okay, you and now. <laughs> Sorry. Tradition. That, that's the film you talked about before. Isn't it? <laughs> I'm so sorry <laughs> for my pronunciation of it. <laughs> it was a great exhibition. It's the one where it rains all the time, right? The study girl. <laughs> and then two people, two, uh, two people switch. <laughs> anyway. Um, well, the exhibition was made. <laughs> what is it called? Say it again. Ukiyo-e? Ukiyo? I don't know. Yeah, sure. Okay. But yeah. uh, Kuniyoshi plus. Okay. Yeah. Kuniyoshi. Anyway. So. <laughs> Fifth anyway. And the exhibition was made uh, up out of two parts. The first one was <laughs> uh, kind of a... Um, so excited to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's based on um, Japanese wood prints. Is that like still going on? That uh, no. It, no, it ended on uh, February 16th. All right. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop interrupting you. Go on. Thank you. <laughs> so um, it was, the exhibition was made up into two parts. The first one was kind of a modern uh, inter- in- interpretation of the art. And then the second part was a more traditional uh, room or gallery. And in the more traditional, you saw um, prints from, and I think, the 1800s from Kuniyoshi and another artist these are things of, that you were looking forward to yeah oh, okay. I really love uh, Japanese medieval art and history so I thought it was great to see and a lot of uh, fun facts to learn because when I go to an exhibition I read all the cards of all the information and then I look at the painting again and then I move from painting to painting it takes me forever <laughs> you've been there for a week yeah. <laughs> which was great so if you loved that um, yeah it would have been a great exhibition for you or maybe you have seen and the second part, which was really cool, and which was kind of the hook for uh, marketing for this uh, exhibition, was the modern interpretation, which was by Andrew Archer, I think his name was. And he made these paintings or prints of first um, bands and basketball players. So basketball players like uh, Kobe Bryant or uh, Magic Johnson, I think, or... I don't know, Shag. Right. And he kind of took their uh, nicknames, what they're known for, mm-hmm. and made a visual represent re- uh, repre- <laughs> presentation of that representation. No? Sure. Yeah, a visual representation, yeah. Yep. So. <laughs> but this was like, ap- th- th- yeah. this, is, this has nothing to do with Kobe passing away now. No, this no. This was like. Not as far as I'm aware. Okay. She must have made this way before then. Um. Yeah, because the exhibition is live uh, since October. Okay. Yeah, and so for example, Kobe Bryant, I think, is called, uh, called the Black Cobra or something like Mamba. that. Mamba. Black Mamba. Uh, and so he made him as a snake, or uh, I don't know what the basketball player was called. He's called the King. LeBron James. Yeah. 
<laughs> so he um, painted him as the shogun, who was the ruler of Japan, uh, and so on, which was really cool. Great art. And the bands, for example, you did uh, David Bowie with a mythical creature or a kiss. Or that he sounds interesting. Did a uh, free prince of, what's it called? Jared Leto. Mm-hmm. Leto. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Really cool. If you want to see, for example. So. Well, I would have loved to have seen it, but it's over now. It is. <laughs> yeah. It took me quite a while to actually see that. Yeah. But, uh, did. but it's very expensive. Yeah? yeah. Who did you go with? Vasilim. Okay. It was I think, the same day or the same other day after we saw What Wrong With You. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, talking about just... movies we're going to see, uh, today is going to be a sneak again. Anything you're hoping for? It's going to come out in the next couple of weeks. I honestly have no idea what's coming out. Like there's... um, Because a movie we might get to see in the sneak today might be Tup- uh, Harriet, about Harriet Tubman, which we actually saw before the Oscars began. Right. Well, I think it's like... But it, I think... I remember them them saying that it's going to come out in like two months. Oh, okay. So I, I'm hoping it's not going to be the case that it's going to sneak today. What, what did you think of Harriet? Well, I wasn't excited to see it because the, the reviews were quite like... Mediocre. Mediocre. Thank you. That's a good word. And um, it, that just sort of made me like, you know, I went into it with low expectations mm-hmm. and I thought it was, I thought it was fine. It's, it's, it's a you know, it's obviously a story that it's deserving to be told as well, mm. as I mentioned last week with Bombshell, but um, I thought she was good. Cynthia Erivo, she was good, and I can understand why she was nominated, but the movie as a whole sort of didn't really do it for me. It was, it felt like a movie that I've seen a couple of times before. Mm. But I think you guys enjoyed it, right? I thought it was pretty cool. I Enjoyed it is obviously, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's a tough story, of course. Yeah. I think it's uh, it's a cool story to tell. I think Cynthia Revo was great. I loved her performance. But my problem with the film was the other performances. Because apart from her, I felt it was quite weak at times. Okay. And I wasn't just I wasn't very interested in the other characters apart from her. But what I really enjoyed about it is um like in the third third or something of the movie, um she says that she um, has visions of God. And right. then she describes that she had an accident when she was a child, but she doesn't think those things are kind of associated. But kind of gives a kind of explanation to what you see, because if they did not mention this at that point in the movie, it would just seem like something supernatural is going on, which you can choose to believe. Or if you want, you can just, all right, the more probable explanation is which... Uh, historians believe is more um, probably true is that she had uh, suffered a bit of drain, uh, brain damage when she was younger mm-hmm. which gave her visions and made her hear voices which she inter- interpreted as the voice of God that's interesting that's an, I, hadn't, I hadn't quite put that together that way that it could be brain damage mm-hmm. but those things like, completely took me out of the film mm-hmm. because I re- like she wants to cross like a river mm-hmm. she gets like a vision of God and then God tells her to cross the river at this section. But apparently that happened. And in in the movie, when she actually meets the guy and the free slaves organization or something like right. that, um, she tells him about the incident. And you then see him write something down and he writes some possible brain damage. Right, right, right. I know. Mm. Fair point. Mm. Now he, I remember that now, he, now that you're saying that. But um, it's still, to me, how the movie portray, portrayed those visions, it felt to me like it was her talking to god you, mm-hmm. you it's you can obviously justify that by saying it's brain damage fair enough but the way that the movie showed those scenes it really sort of took me out of the film mm-hmm. i don't it's difficult maybe that's like a stupid thing to say because it's obviously can be interpreted in many different ways but it it sort of took me out every single time that happened and and another thing about this film is like whenever you tell a story about someone truly remarkable like harriet tubman i had goosebumps at the end mm-hmm. but that's sort of like i don't want to say that you know, it's the it's the usual biopic um, formula of at the end, like text comes up on the screen and it tells you everything about her and her achievements mm-hmm. and stuff. And I got goosebumps back then uh, when that happened because it's a remarkable achievement and she's a remarkable person. But I don't want to sort of praise the film for that because you can have any you can have any film and then at the end you tell me what that it's person easy did. Too, yeah, yeah. So it's sort of 
in my I don't want to call it cheap because obviously I don't think they were going for it, but it sort of felt like you're telling a story, which then at the end, it sort of ends on this high about this person and her achievements. And you just seen that on the screen. And I would have had the same experience maybe if I just read that on a piece of paper. Mm. That's my two cents on the area. But yeah, I don't, <laughs> it's, it's a decent film. I think I think it's great just to see her performance. Yeah. I enjoyed it very much. She was the one, if you don't know her, she was in a, Bad Times at the El Royale, which was a f- fun little film that came out a couple of years ago. Also a great film to watch with friends, just like Gentleman. Yeah. A mm, bit tougher subject, but it's a great then, the whole the cult thing. Yeah. yeah. That was one of those films I was super excited about and sort of let me down as well. <laughs> but it's still fun. It's mm. a fun film to watch for sure. Yeah, but what else could be coming out? Like Anything you're looking forward to in the next couple of, couple of weeks? Uh, I haven't really given it much thought. The most films I've been excited to see were the Oscar contenders, which I think we've all seen. Maybe Richard Jewell would be cool. We've seen a, we, uh, there's a couple missing, like uh, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Yeah. Well, when they, is that coming out? I th- in April? I think so, yeah. yeah. I think that's quite late as well. I mean, like the big movie season's probably over and, well, still. Oh, here we go. So Just Mercy is one of those films that's coming out. That's oh, a film that I've yeah. seen in, in Toronto and I love that film. That I think that's coming out like... Uh, next week and that's a there's a high probability yeah. of that being, that being cool in the see, yeah yeah it's a good film and um richard jewel as you said and a couple of a couple of others waves i don't know if that's coming and waves oh i heard it was amazing it's supposed to be good yeah, yeah. um i don't know if that has a, a, a an austrian release but I, I, I would hope so but just mercy that um, maybe that maybe we're going to see that one it's going to be an interesting one i think you, yeah. you're going to like that it's like a lawyer drama mm-hmm. about with michael b jordan jimmy that's i'm not a huge fan of uh uh Courtroom drums. Yeah, I love them. It's yeah. one of my favorite genres, dude. But yeah, it's, I mean, I always kind of get carried away at times because there's always that scene when the person who's defending someone who's innocent and he kind of screams and I was like, right. "Oh my god, tell him, tell him." <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but I think it's also kind of an easy thing to do because just he's saying all the things you want to say to people who, I don't know, if it's uh, like um, what's it called? To kill a mockingbird, and you know, you know, he's innocent, and he's yeah, he tells him off. You kind of get excited in the moment because it's just kind of cool to see someone tell those kind of people off. Right, it's an easy thing to do. Kinda. I was going to say that. Yeah, that's a bash it, to kill a mockingbird. <laughs> <laughs> King bash a classic. But um, now that I've, I've mentioned that Harriet thing with mm. the credits at the end, not the credits, but like the, the the additional information, it's very similar in Just Mercy that it just at the end, it's not a spoiler by any means. It's just at the end you get like information mm. presented, like text on the screen, and that just really worked for me. To I, I it, yeah, I think, and I can't quite explain why that is something that I'm not like criticizing about Just Mercy because it's the same formula. It's just I think that the film as a whole sort of, um, it sort of deserves or. The ending is sort of. Be careful. <laughs> no, no, no. No, but I, th- I just think, what's the word? I think it sort of earns that ending. That's what. I was, that's what I was trying to say. A bit more than uh, Harriet. I haven't seen Just Mercy. No, I can't. Uh, can't end that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, right. um, another episode in the books. <laughs> right. Thank you for listening. Um, so if you want to see any new movies, I know if Wedding With You is still playing. Gentleman is coming out soon. And if you want to reach us, we now have a Twitter account, at Best Thing Radio. We hope we're going to check in regularly. I think it's more going to be Flow thing because I do not know how to do anything with social media. I don't have Twitter, Facebook, or whatsoever. Well, you do now. I do now. My <laughs> first Twitter account. I'm so proud. Yeah, so if you if you want to follow us there, you can you can... Look that up on, on Twitter, as you said, mm-hmm. Best Thing Radio. And um, yeah, once again, thank you for, for all your feedback and thank you for listening to this week's episode. And um, yeah, we hope you enjoyed it and um, we'll see you next week. Bye.